Uh, you know, it all comes from within. So we're, we're finishing up on Exodus. In fact, I'll finish reading it today. And we've gotten past the place where God has given Moses the blueprint for creating the tools, the clothing, the tabernacle, that sort of thing. And we're at that place where God has told him to honor the seventh day of rest. Now, at this point, if there was any doubt that it's all about modeling God's behavior. In other words, the way God created it, created in Genesis chapter 1 and, and chapter 2, uh, primarily in chapter 1 because chapter 2 was spent on manifestation. Uh, it was 2 verse 7 where God manifested his, um, his image into man but he created man in one so all of creation happened in Genesis chapter 1 so God is teaching Moses about the creation of the kingdom the way I read it and the governance and part of that is is understanding the seventh day of rest, which is on a Saturday, technically, and I'm not trying to get into a, a big theological thing, difference between the Roman clock, you know, I was talking to a brother of mine uh, recently about the Roman clock and what we call the Jewish clock, which is really not the Jewish clock, it's the natural laws. Uh, how the earth uh, replenishes itself uh, you know with the natural clock and we we're talking about Nisan and uh, you know I, I consulted a Jewish brother of mine as far as timing goes in any event with all of that said everything comes from within so all of creation comes within and all of destruction as well. Uh, as creators, we have the ability to create and we also have the, the ability to destroy. So in Genesis chapter 32 starts, you know, the experience when God had, you know, taken Moses through this whole experience along with Aaron, her, although Aaron wasn't in the room. I say that in, in, a, in a very lighthearted way, uh, but Aaron was on the mountain with her and the other leaders. The reason why I say everything comes from within is, <clears throat> and I think it's taken too lightly, who Aaron was. Aaron represents the priesthood, not officially at this point, because those, again, those rules, those instructions were coming down from Moses, I believe, because everything was not necessarily um, set in motion at that place that God repented from destroying them because Moses was just coming down with the rules. Uh, so there was a certain amount of mercy there. But Aaron represents the priesthood. Aaron, listening to the leaders, decided to take the gold. It was Aaron from within. It was Aaron that decided to take the gold, the earrings from the, from the, from the wives and, and that sort of thing, and create this golden calf. I think what we miss is that that was a journey. Because Aaron and her had already separated themselves from the people in general. So they had to go right back down and create because they were on, already on the mountain. Exodus chapter 24. 
Um, in verse 9, then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. They had already left to go up the mountain. And again, they didn't go all the way up to the top of the mountain where, uh, where Moses and Joshua were when they were getting the instructions, primarily Moses because he was the leader. Verse 12, And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me in the mount. But there was a journey to the mountain, and then there was a journey to the mount. I personally find it fascinating that uh, we, we don't talk about the leadership because these people were leaders. That's why I Moses was training them. In verse 9, even though he left them there in the mountain, they made a decision to leave the mountain because they were only in the foothills of the mountain. They made the decision to leave the mountain and go back to the people and create a golden calf. Exodus chapter 32 verse 1, and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people, which are the leaders, gathered themselves together unto Aaron. The disappointing thing was it's, it was our leadership that led us astray. Instead of them taking the hit and saying, we're going to trust that Moses is coming down with instructions from God on high. But instead, in verse 2, And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings. And we know the story of building the calf and that sort of thing. But it came from within. The, 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 the destruction isn't from Satan. The destruction isn't from Russia. The destruction isn't from Turkey, although there are prophetic things going on with those countries. The, prof the, the destruction isn't from your employer. The destruction isn't from the government. The destruction is from those who lead you morally. It's, listen, you know, nothing I do is popular. <laughs> and again, for my, primarily for my kids, the guys in Kenya, the prophetic nature of understanding how things work. Is, is huge for your success. You will go someplace I can, I will never be able to go. Never. Uh, you will go further, but you have to prophetically understand whose voice to listen to. Do you listen to the voice of the guy who is um, supposed to be the moral leader, but it's but what he's telling you to do is not consistent with the moral laws? Do you do you still follow him? Or do you say, I pass, and I'll wait for the one who has the moral laws? Keep in mind, Moses represents God. At the time, the Pharaoh uh, had taken on a God complex that he had gotten the, the children of Israel out of. And I explained that in the previous video. It was God against God. So just because somebody say they represent the man doesn't mean they represent the man if they lead you to do something against the man. I'm 
going over my 10 minutes again.